everyone and welcome to Belgrade in Serbia. I'm currently at the uh, Belgrade Aviation Museum which is located at uh, the Nikola Tesla airport. And you can see we have a caravel here that was owned by Air Serbia back in the Yugoslavia days. So this is uh, the airline that uh, preceded Air Serbia and they operated these caravels uh, on their route network which was very similar to the current route network. They even had DC-10s that flew to New York and if you know anything about Air Serbia is that today they have an A330 that flies the route to New York and this A330 is actually the airplane that I'm going to be flying uh, this morning basically but it won't be on a transatlantic flight to New York I'm going to be flying it on a 45 minute hop down to the Montenegrin capital of Podgorica now the reason why I booked this trip is actually because Air Serbia recently had recently received a new A330 that dates to maybe like a month ago so nobody has made a trip report on the aircraft yet so i thought it would be a good occasion to fly on the ac30 in business class on the new ac30 that they received uh like a month ago uh down to podgorica on the 45 minute hop to montenegro so uh let's check out what the succeeder of the yugoslovenski idol transport uh, air serbia has to offer on this incredible flight let's go Now if ever you do happen to come to Belgrade airport for either a flight or just driving through it's really worth it to come to this museum because I think it's free <laughs> um, I mean you know there's like a gate there which is open since it's open I just decided to pass through and nobody asked me to see a ticket or asked me to pay so now I have access to all these planes and all these information on the boards I don't know if we can actually get inside the dome but uh, we can at least walk around these beauties Alright, so it's now 10.30, which means that I have three hours before my flight. Let's go and check in and um, go check out what the lounge looks like, what the business class on uh, the business class lounge in Air Serbia looks like. I've heard some mixed reviews, so I'm excited to check it out by myself. Let's check it out. The doors of the terminal are just a mere 5 minutes walk away from the Aviation Museum. Although it is not the most welcoming of pathways, it is still an easy walk if you don't carry much luggage with you. Once you enter the building, you must walk to the left until you reach the Air Serbia check-in counters. Normally this is where I'd get my ticket, but since I already had it on my phone, I headed straight to passport control. So one thing about Belgrade airport is that security, instead of passing like a general point of security like most airports, uh, it's small, it's like small securities at every gate, uh, which is a system that personally I don't know if I like. I hate being trapped like in the gate once you pass security, but I also like the idea of being able to go airside if you don't fly. So I guess there's good and bad sides to it. When buying a business class ticket with Air Serbia, you will receive complimentary access to the lounge which is located near gate A4. Upon entering, you simply show the receptionist your ticket and you're good to go. I was positively surprised at how clean and professional the lounge looks despite the relatively small size of the airline. You can help yourself to cold drinks as you wish, and normally there will be a self-serve buffet. But as part of Air Serbia's health and safety measures, 
Today it will only be a la carte service. Once settled down, I opened the menu and I was a little underwhelmed by the options. However, it is very acceptable for the prices I've paid on this trip. I was curiously tempted to try out their meatballs, or the cheese. But in spite of these rather funny mistakes, I settled down for something a little more familiar. I just realized that like, I ordered the most American thing possible, aka coke and fries. <laughs> Alright. Even though I had only selected an entree, it was plenty enough before boarding my morning flight to Montenegro. We've actually got like a full-on bathroom here. Just a shower. Just having a shower is a huge plus for me. So, so far the lounge is very good. While making my way to gate C5, I couldn't help but stop by this interesting site. A Qatar Airways Airbus A320. Not a plane we usually see on my side of the ocean. After passing through Belgrade's rather annoying gate security system, I was able to set my eyes on the brand new Air Serbia A330-200. This aircraft features the name and portrait of the famous Serbian inventor Nikola Tesla, who makes the pride of this airline and airport. As a business passenger, I got to board the plane before anyone else, as per standard. First impressions of the cabin and seat 3A are rather good. The cabin looks a little outdated as it is the same one used by the previous owner, Aeroflot, but it still sports the Air Serbia color palette. The seat features virtually infinite legroom, a large seat pocket, a shoe storage compartment, a coat hanger, seat controls, a universal power outlet, more storage, a reading light, a very big tray table, a pocket for the magazine, the safety card, and finally a remote control for the IFE. This is all surely a great way to fly over to Montenegro, especially for 20 euros. As passengers continued to board, I decided to check out the bathroom since I figured I wouldn't have much time in flight. It seemingly featured all the usual amenities you normally have and looked like it had just been cleaned by the crew. Overall, a decent place. When I made it back to my seat, a flight attendant came around the cabin to ask us our meal orders. I don't know if this is usual procedure or unique to this short flight, but either way, very appreciated. While waiting for pushback, Air Serbia likes to play promotional videos in a non-stop cycle on our IFEs, in a very Serbian fashion. If you have been to Serbia before, you'll know that if there's one thing this country loves is having advertisements everywhere. After about 40 minutes on the ground, we were ready to push back with a short 10 minutes delay.
でコストプラネネダでプレマフディコスミエラにアオココマートをプレルサモアコロポストジンマー。And after a beautiful climb out of Belgrade, I checked out the IFE system. The remote was quite responsive, however, the selection was a bit limited, especially since the documentary section was blocked for some obscure reason. A few minutes later, my previous meal order arrived. I had selected the sandwich and cheese platter. Now, I don't usually fly in business class, but I'd have a tendency to say that this is an acceptable meal for a 40 minutes regional flight. Just as I finished my platter, the flight attendants came around to pick up anything remaining as we had already started the descent into Montenegro. Now that we have arrived, I waited for everybody to exit the aircraft so I could get a clean shot of the economy cabin. I had previously asked a flight attendant for permission, which she gave me. However, when I got up to the task, the entire crew rushed to me saying I couldn't use those images for public use as it is not representative of the Air Serbia product. So, I was thinking that if you like to take a picture that is for you, you yeah. can't use it. Okay. On the to put media. it on the social media. Okay. Especially now. Yeah, yeah that's true. I was thinking that you want to take a picture that is this class. Class. Yes. Not, uh, Okay, yeah. It's not up to standards. It's not up to standards like this. That's why I don't want to put the picture like that because it's not represented. No problem. Personally, I don't know how I feel about this censorship, but I understand that they have an image they want to keep, so here are some Google images instead. When deplaning at Podgorica International Airport, you must walk all the way from the plane to the terminal. It is surely not the most glamorous form of airport experience, but it is awesome for app geeks like me. All right, so we made it outside of the aircraft. The flight was really good. For a 45 minutes flight, we got like a meal. 
the uh, flight attendants were really nice to let me, you know, take some quick pictures, but unfortunately, we didn't have much time. But uh, overall, it's a great flight. When I made it to the terminal, it became clear that the airport was not designed for wide body loads. This flight was in fact a one-time event, which I haven't quite grasped the purpose of, but I do know that in normal times, only A319s and ATRs fly from Belgrade to Podgorica. After being granted entry by one of the two border agents, I made my way outside the airport into the classic Balkan summer heat. I found a dodgy taxi driver and made my way back into the city center. Montenegro. The flight was honestly great. Apart from maybe the fact that, well, I mean, we had like maybe 10 minutes of delay, but you know, that's that's okay. It was it's like a 40 minute flight, so 10 minutes delay, that's all right. Um, the only issue was that during uh, deep planning, you know, I was told that I was allowed to film around the cabin economy class to show like the economy seats. But uh, when I tried doing it, I think the chief flight attendant came around and told me, no, you're not allowed to film. You're not allowed to show these images because it, it's not representative of what you get when you board Air Serbia. And I guess that's all right because it's a pretty it's a pretty um, popular flight in the sense that I saw other trip reporters, I saw other media uh, on board the flight. So I I guess uh, the airline has their eyes on this particular flight. So I don't think they want the management to see a bad representation of Air Serbia under their supervision. So that I think that's why the flight attendants told me to not film business class after. Uh, plane because you know how it is a cabin can be disgusting after after a flight and uh, just have you know a lot of papers crumbs maybe uh, stuff laid around everywhere and that's all right so uh, other than that the crew was amazing the crew was perfect I don't know if that's because I had a camera with me but I found the crew to be really really nice both in the lounge as in the airplane the Serbs can be proud of their national airline it's a really nice airline and if ever you want a flight I recommend it because it's it's great value for what it is I paid a hundred 120 euros for this flight one way in a life flight economy and honestly for for a 40 minutes flight that might seem like a lot of money but just for the unique experience i found it to be really cheap you know it's the same price than the atr business so i was like okay might as well take it on the a330 then but um yeah I hope you guys have enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed uh, filming it. Obviously, it's not as fun, but you know, at least you get a glimpse of it. Uh, it was really nice to fly on this aircraft to try the experience without having to fly to New York. And I hope now you know you can you can make a good idea of what Air Serbia is. And uh, have a great day. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.